Good evening, good evening. This is uh, Pastor Robinson coming to you from New Covenant Church of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are so happy to be with you this evening. Thank you for joining us. We certainly admonish you to draw nigh unto the Lord. Come close, come close to God. Now is the time, hallelujah, to abide under the shadow of the Almighty, uh, your refuge, your fortress. Hallelujah. Quickly this evening, we just want to thank you. We greet everybody. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for commenting. And we want to go quickly to the book of Job this evening. Uh, we want to look at the oppressor, the one that uh, the scriptures describe in the 41st chapter of the book of Job. Job being the oldest book in the Bible, the oldest book in the Bible. So this thing has existed. Yes, it's existed from time, when time began. Here we are, faced with Leviathan. Now, Leviathan is considered by some theologians as a living serpent that's going to rise out of the ocean, uh, out of the sea at some point. Uh, others, myself, um, I just want to tell you and share with you about the attributes of this serpent, the attributes of this uh, spiritual being. I'm going to approach it and present to you the imagery that has been shared with me. And we want to look and see what God was actually saying to Job. Job had enemies that came against him. Um, and Job was trying to uh, go about his life. And, and uh, God had blessed him. He was an upright man. He uh, went through much suffering. Uh, but the problem was, uh, I, I looked at psalm 73 and said you know people had so much it was the abundance until they wore, wore a necklace of pride <laughs> they so job was dealing with with self-pride he had all this and god had blessed him and uh he definitely acknowledged god as having given it to him but he was wearing it as a source of pride and god began to tell job that this is the spirit over which Leviathan uh, abides. It's Leviathan. It's a spirit of pride, a spirit of, you know what? <laughs> I got it going on. And you didn't do anything yourself. The Bible says in St. John 15 and 5, we can do nothing without God. We can do nothing. We can't bring forth fruit. We cannot. Bring, we can't do anything without God. God is the one that puts breath in our bodies. But look at what Leviathan does. This is our enemy right here, a spirit of pride. We need to look and see. And it's, it, it's alarming because here we find at the last verse of Chapter 41, it says, this thing, he holds every high thing. This spirit is looking at your attitude. This spirit is seeing that, you know what, oh, but if you think yourself to be high, uh, if you think yourself to have done anything, this is the spirit that is controlling. Here it is. Uh, chapter 41, verse 34 says, he is king over all the children of pride. It's time for us to humble down. Yes, yes, yes. Time for all of us to humble down. We need to humble ourselves before God, realizing that God is almighty and that, you know, we can't even breathe uh, without God. God has to breathe air into us to get into this earth. And he is the one who is controlling breath and keeping it in our bodies, going back and forth and in and out. Hallelujah, it's God. Hallelujah, what have we to be proud of? We are totally dependent upon the Lord for life itself. Glory to God. And because you have a nice 
couch or a wonderful sofa set and you think and you have made it come on now Jesus look at this let's see what God asked Job he said can you draw out Leviathan with a hook <laughs> let's see what Leviathan looks like let's see what his face he said oh wait let's see he says or snare his tongue with a line which you lower can you catch him no God has to show you where pride is in your life pride can be in anything you can be too proud of a car you can be too proud of a man of God a woman of God pride you can be too proud of yourself yes you can be proud, so proud of your children, always boasting and bragging on your children. Let me tell you something. God is sure enough telling us, hallelujah, who the king of pride is. The children of pride, this is Leviathan that is abiding over them. Leviathan don't play. Let me show you what Leviathan's face look like. Let me just show you this. This God has been showing me this. Oh, my God. Lord, I thank him for it. We need the, the topic here of this presentation is how badly we need the wisdom of God. We need to acknowledge God. We need to ask God, God, give me your wisdom. Because in this world, in these days, you're not going to make it unless you're walking with God in the shadow of, his, of the Almighty with his wisdom. We have to have the wisdom of God. Oh, my Lord. I'm not saying that we're not going to go through. But look at the oppressor. Let's look at what, you know, what God was asking Job. That can you catch this thing with a pole? Uh, a fishing rod? Can you control it? Can you pull it in? Why not, Job? Let's see why. Leviathan was an image that describes the God of this world. This is the one thing we wrestle against. We wrestle against pride. His description is as follows. In ancient days, in battles, in natural battles, uh, there was a certain amount of integrity that was involved. You know, they would line up on one side of the mountain, line up on the other side of the mountain, and... Uh, they would talk trash to one another, really. That's what was happening. He said, you know what, like like David and Goliath, you know, I am who I am, Goliath said. And uh, David said, well, I know who, who's God that I serve. And I, I come to you in the name of the Lord. And sure enough, he came out of there in the victory. Hallelujah. But let's look here. In the face of Leviathan. Let's look at the devil's face. face.